Hello, welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. I'm Chris Remo, and it is Saturday, August 19th, 2023. Um, it's a Saturday puzzle today, which means a themeless and most likely difficult crossword. We'll have to find out. But this potentially tricky edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Madeline Lee, Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They're bringing us this series by sustaining this channel with their generous support to the Patreon campaign. Thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel. I really do appreciate that. It really does keep this thing going. And uh, if you'd like to contribute to the channel in that way yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. There's also a link in the description field. And you can find there the bonus videos available to backers, including yesterday's um, weekly mini puzzle pseudo speed solve. I saw the last seven days of New York Times crossword mini puzzles. And I did reasonably well time-wise yesterday. I'm actually fairly fairly pleased with my, with my time. So you can check that out if you're interested. And of course, there's always the Daily Solve Discord chat server available. Uh, that's a nice, friendly chat community. You can uh, join that via a link in the description field as well. And finally, please do consider subscribing to the channel on YouTube if you've been enjoying these videos. It's a big help to the channel, and uh, it'll be a help to you. So all that said, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a Saturday themeless puzzle, a, a debut construction by David P. Williams. So let's see what he's got in store for us today. It was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start, let's start solving. Excuse me while I light my blank Bob Marley lyric. Uh, in six letters, I'm guessing light my spliff. But let's see if that if that works. Basketball, e.g. Sport? Is could it possibly be as simple as that? No, no, no. Of course it can't be. It's not the right number of letters. Never mind. What am I thinking? Um the basketball itself is a sphere, I suppose. Can I cross anything quickly that rules that out, rules it in even? Numbers after a number. Well, this is something, this is, this used to be very common in the New York Times crossword, slightly less so now, I think because it's simply less common in the world, um, which is an extension number, usually part of a business telephone number. Um, they do still exist, but just less common. So that would allow sphere. Get ready as concrete. Premix, premixed concrete. Does that work with this? It does. Let's put these in and see if this if this all works. I'm thinking it's maybe correct. Ho hum. Prosaic, sort of on you know, run of the mill. It's kind of an ordinary thing. Uh, meme creature, a lol cat. I do actually remember a period of time when this this appeared a couple of I don't know, at least a couple of times in the New York Times crossword, I'm pretty sure. And at least once, I think, since I've been doing the series. Um, anyway, keychain. Keychain. Oh, uh, an islet? A key in the sense of a... I, I don't actually know exactly what defines a key. I'm sure I've learned it before. Um, I mean, it's some sort of, you know island formation. Uh, anyway, a, a chain of them, I guess, isn't... No, that doesn't make sense, though, because an islet is a single small island. It's something like this. It's something similar to that. Narragansett Bay in New York Harbor for two. Rhea is a Rhea is a, is a kind of inlet, so that would that would work. Um, you know, bay, for instance, is, is, could be that. Word shortened from a three-word phrase that can be further shortened by dropping its first, fourth, and fifth letters. This is MC, Master of Ceremonies. So Master of Ceremonies, um, MC, can be phonetically spelled E-M-C-E-E, -E, and then further shortened by dropping the C-E. It's a slightly odd way of putting it because I, it feels as though the chain doesn't really go from Master of Ceremonies to the five-letter word to the two-letter word, but really in practical terms, it goes from the three-word phrase to the two-letter abbreviation to then the five-letter phonetic representation of that two-letter. But, you know, we get it. <laughs> we understand what the clues say. Is this Isley's? Keychain, Isley's. 
Maybe. I think that might be right. But let's let's get it through crosses if we can. She played Bonnie in 1967's Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, um, uh, uh, Faye Dunaway. There we go. Giant syllable. Fee-fi-fo-fum from the um, story of Jack and the Beanstalk. So this would be the phi bit. Uh, damn right. Hell yeah, you could say. Uh, and that does confirm is Lee. No, it's not. It's Isles. Sorry, what on earth was I thinking? Why did I say Isley? What? Am I losing my mind? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was doing there. I think I just invented a letter. I don't I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, permit required of old jazz. What? Yeah, sorry. I'm just completely befuddled by my by my shenanigans over here. Key aisles. There we go. Okay. So so the the key it's a, a key is a chain of aisles. That that makes more sense. I boy, I really made a complete mess of that in many ways, both definitionally and in terms of my simply reading the letters in front of my face. Anyway, permit required of old jazz musicians. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if I'll know this. I'm not sure if I will. Ball game. Bocce. Uh, just thinking in five letters. Preoccupations. Preoccupations. I'm not sure. They come full circle. Common golf mistakes. Sorry, common golf mistakes, singular. A common golf is it a divot maybe when never actually played golf but i know there's a thing where you can sort of take a chunk of earth out of the ground when you know during your swing is that maybe what that could be theater backers 11-sided coin informally interesting not learned i think this might not be might not be correct it might receive scoops, a cone, an ice cream cone. Theater backers. 11-sided coin, not learned, unknown. Um, unread. Oh yeah, it could be not learned as in a person. Unread could maybe, you're not, you're not well read. I don't know, it could be un something. Does that help? Common golf mistake. Probably would help someone who knows anything about golf. The Anchorman and Anchorman. Believe it or not, I've never seen Anchorman, but I do know the character's name is Ron Burgundy, so maybe that's the answer here. Theater backers. Oh, scrims. You could put a scrim up, a kind of backdrop in a theatrical context. I think that's probably correct. Common golf. Oh, slice? Is that that's something in golf, isn't it? That's a is that something to do with kind of a glancing hit off of the ball, perhaps? Oh, so an eleven-sided coin. I was wondering if this was going to be a loony, actually in uh, Canadian currency, um, but I wasn't certain, so I was waiting until I'd cross this, but I, I, I bet that is what that is, the loony, the, uh, what, the $1 Canadian uh, coin. Not Oh, if something's not learned, it's innate. You just have it in you. It's instinctual. Rushed. If you're rushed or in a hurry, very much in. If something's very much in its hip, it's popular. Cell division. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's hot because cell division, I think, would be mitosis, which is just one of those concepts I vaguely remember from decades ago when I last took biology. Uh, boil. If you boil, you're very angry. You see that you're seething, you're boiling. Labor demand. Uh, push. So, right, you read this and it sounds like maybe a labor union, you know, demand, a sort of workplace demand or something. Uh, but no, I think it is dealing with childbirth, actually. Hence the question mark pun indicator. Key's partner. Ah, Key and Peel. One of the really, truly great sketch comedy acts. I, I always found sketch comedy, televised sketch comedy, to be so hit or miss. Key and Peel, I really thought, it, honestly, pretty much every single sketch I thought was incredibly funny. Um, and then Jordan Peele went on to become an incredibly talented film director. So, uh, yeah, I guess not a coincidence, probably. Uncanny, eerie, uh, weariness, vice, and want in Voltaire's Candide. Weariness, vice, and want in Voltaire's Candide. I've never actually read Candide. Uh, coupons, e.g. 
and to embellish something unnecessarily. Gild of the lily? Yeah, that's a phrase that means to embellish something unnecessarily, so that works well. Uh, blank Ehrenreich, Han Solo's portrayer in Solo, a Star Wars story. A Star Wars story. Um, I haven't seen this, but I, I do think, I, is it Alden Ehrenreich, maybe? I, I mean, I know of this actor from, I don't know what, but was he in the Coen Brothers film um, Hail Caesar, or am I mixing him up with someone else? I can't remember. Uh, in any case, I think Alden, I think that's his name. Locale of Van Gogh's The Bedroom Paintings. I know that's not the proper pronunciation of Van Gogh, of the artist. Um, is it Arnold? I'm, I'm kind of taking a stab there. I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, oh, are these evils in Voltaire's Candide? Baby. Molly coddle to baby somebody, to molly coddle them, to sort of treat them maybe in a kind of condescendingly childlike way. Risk for bra people with braces. Uh, I'm not sure. Word after good or by. Good golly or by golly. Those are sort of light oaths. And the Swedish Sphinx. Garbo? I, uh, Greta Garbo? I don't know. Risk for I'm not actually sure who this is. Uh, coupons, e.g. Something, oh, something savers. You save money. They come full, full circle. What have we not seen? Asian appetizers. Satay, chicken satay, maybe? Let's see, let's see if we can confirm or deny that. Where most of the inventions of Leonardo da Vinci are stored. Milan? Sounds plausible to me. Oh, so coupons are money savers, right? That would have been the most obvious thing to, to put, but I didn't think of it. Risk for people with braces. Oh, candy is a risk because I think sort of hard candy could potentially, you know, dislodge or detach one, you know, your braces on your teeth, perhaps. So broadcast alternative, cable, right? So television, you have broadcast television and then cable television, um, paid, paid cable television. Permit required of old jazz musicians, right? So what do I think this is? Cabaret code? Cabaret... Cabaret something, surely. Uh, not sure what, but let's look at that. This is bocce. Oh, wow, that's so funny that that, that guess worked out. So preoccupations are hobby horses, right? You could refer to something that you, you know, you do habitually or preoccupied with as, one, as a hobby horse of yours. This is Garbo. It is Greta Garbo. Why did I think that was right? It was. I'm very pleased it was. I wish I were more confident about it. I don't know. I just, I must have, I must have seen that somewhere before. Um, in reference to her. Okay, they come full circle, or maybe maybe I haven't, and it was just I don't know. Did it, did I have the G in there already? So it was just maybe it was just Swedish starting with G in five letters. I don't know. Anyway, they come full circle. Closed loops would I guess closed. Is there anything else that would work there? Closed circuit. Closed. In five letters, pluralized. I feel it does feel like closed loop. Let's see. Uh, Oh, that, that would work with Arl. Did I know this somehow? I, I must have encountered that at some point in a museum or something. Cabaret. Closed loops. Harsh lighting. Arson. Oh, that's very clever. Uh, you sort of light something on fire in a harsh way, in a criminal way. Uh, you commit arson. Um, I haven't seen that pun before. That's pretty good. So... Cabaret card, I guess this must be. A permit required of old jazz musicians. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not familiar with that concept, but it sounds like it would be the answer to me. Component of a Zoom call. Zoom calls are audio-visual uh, communication, so it would include video. Seconds would be aids. So someone, someone, your second, your aid, your assistant. And then potter's product. So a potter could make a vase. A pot, so potter, someone who makes pottery, of course. So... Um, yeah, they could make a vase. Uh, tough cookies. Too bad, I presume. Let's, is there anything else that could be other than too, too sad? I don't know, unlikely. Popular, big. If something's popular, it's big. Uh, it takes a little hair off, perhaps. Edges or... Mm, not sure. Foolish. 
level. Sand off? No, it doesn't fit. 1909, Nobelist for contribu- contributions to the invention of radio. Marconi um, was important in the, in the development of radio. I don't remember his first name, but uh, yeah, I do know that name for that purpose. Ending with cyclo- cyclotron is a scientific thing or yeah it's something to do with is it some kind of particle accelerator or something something like that Uh, knock yourself out go to town someone could say just go for it routine a routine could be an act maybe a stage routine and then tough cookies does look like too bad level could be status you've reached a certain level a certain status so if you're foolish you're unwise yes there we go and takes a little hair off, say perhaps, oh, so singes, right? Your, I don't know, your hand or something could be singed and maybe a little hair is burned off. Okay, bronze finish maybe. So this could be third place in a competition or I guess it could be some kind of material finish on, I don't know, a sort of bronze coating of something metal. I'm not sure. Swish miss. Is that basketball? I know that people say swish to refer to a ball going straight in the hoop without bouncing on the rim at all. So I'm wondering if it's... Or maybe deb for debutante? I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're looking for there. Skeptical look. Side eye? People, especially in the modern era, people you you know expressly use the phrase side eye to refer to a kind of skeptical look. Uh but I'm not sure if this is right. Let's see. Fall behind in the end. Uh, supposed subject of Taylor Swift's Dear John. Oof, I haven't a clue about that. Uh, one getting schooled. Learner. Um, something with an R. Does that help me down here? Minimal. I don't know. Well, this little corner is putting putting up a, quite a bit of challenge at the end, isn't it? Goes radioactive. I don't know. One's calling the shots in brief. Well, that'll end with an S, right? NSA surveillance program that shares its name with an entity in the Terminator movies. Oh, right. Okay. Skynet, I guess. Skynet is the um, malevolent sort of AI uh, intelligence. It's sort of artificial intelligence in the Terminator films. So I guess the NSA has a surveillance program called that. That's ominous. I'm sure I've encountered that before, but I didn't remember it offhand acquiescent. If you're acquiescent, you're meek, maybe. You acquiesce to things. Uh, give in to things. Dig, say. Fancy? I, I I really dig that. I fancy it. Oops, what am I doing? Uh, it could be, if, if this is a verb. I mean, it could be a dig, like a, in the ground, or it could be to dig in the ground, actually, which would also be a verb. So who is the supposed subject of Taylor's? I just don't know. I... I'm wondering if I'll recognize the name when we see it. Fall be- I mean, I won't probably recognize it from that context, but I might recognize it from the world. Fall behind in the end. Fade, maybe. You could say a star faded. I don't know. Fell behind in the end. Eh, good word. It's probably, there's, a, there's a better way to, to deploy that. But Minimal. Least doesn't work. It's the merest. If it has to end in EST, which it probably does as a superlative, uh, it could be merest. Uh, swish miss. Oh, it was exactly what I said. It was the rim. It's the it misses the rim in basketball. Right? Okay, I didn't think to actually just try that word. So bronze finish maybe is. Oh, I don't know. Goes radioactive. Oh, decays. Radioactive decay. Is that what we're looking for? One's calling the shots in brief. MDs? Shots as in sort of vaccinations? Um, ADs? Assistant directors? One's getting schooled. Oh, one getting schooled. Sorry, a mentee. Someone being mentored. So it is MDs. It is medical doctors. Okay, so then this is a spray tan. A bronze finish. It was dealing with sort of a bronze kind of cover of a material, but the material is human skin. <laughs> so, uh, and it's not real bronze, but, um, so, oh, Mayer. Oh, John Mayer is a guitarist. Okay. Maybe, were they in a relationship? Maybe. I'm not sure, but let's see if this works.
There we go. That was the Saturday crossword. Uh, I thought it was relatively reasonably uh, solvable. I mean, obviously it was solvable, but um, did pretty well until I hit this little bit, little corner at the end here when I kind of hit a wall. Um, but yeah, there's some nice things in here. And I guess there are probably some cases where I just sort of got lucky, to be honest, a bit and got things that maybe wouldn't have been immediate write-ins like Garbo. I, I wish I would have just put it in immediately. Um, Bocce, I guess, just came to mind immediately. Although I guess I didn't put either of those in immediately. So I don't know that they necessarily even helped with the solve all that much. Um, Gild the Lily and Molly Coddle came to mind quickly, which was helpful. Arl, again, another one that I intuited, but didn't write in immediately. Um, yeah, so it was, a, it was a funny crossword of sort of lots of suspicions on my part that for the most part worked out reasonably well. Sometimes I'll I'll do things like that and then I'll have to go and revise them later. But today I had, I had some nice early guesses that ultimately panned out to be correct. Um, so yeah, it's actually, I find this one very difficult to, to gauge in terms of difficulty. <laughs> I'm not really sure because I feel as though I had a very, uh, I don't know, kind of idiosyncratic solve. Let me know how you fared with this Saturday puzzle. Was this difficult for a Saturday, easy for a Saturday? right on average? I don't know. I'm very curious to hear from other people in the comments or the Daily Solve Discord chat server. But until I until I know that, in the meantime, let's read a few clues from yesterday's puzzle, of which I did select several. So, uh, so many people pointed this out, but thank you to the first person I think who did, who's Mr. Cammy, who pointed it out immediately, pretty much, which was, for three down, a home makeover could be a home reno, short for renovation. Yes, of course, of course it is, and uh, I think I certainly know that. And as as uh, Chinoe points out, I've answered this in crosswords before with no problem. So I think the problem was, in fact, I think yes, Innis twenty two explains I think exactly what's going on. I've had this kind of brain fart many times. There we go, referencing another uh, answer from yesterday's puzzle. Once the pronunciation of re as re gets stuck in your head, it's hard to shift to ren. I think that's basically right, and I think even more particularly what was going on was that I was thinking of the RE as the bit of re as the generalized prefix meaning redo, which is still, I think, the, the purpose it's serving, except that we don't really have novation as a word in English, even though you can sort of, you know, work backwards etymologically. Uh, and so I think I just wasn't thinking, uh, I was trying to think of words that are re something, but re novate or renovation isn't, you know, that in and of itself isn't an example of that. Um, so I think I just got caught up trying to think of the, of that kind of reword. Anyway, so that's what happened there. Thank you to everybody who pointed out renovation, which is obviously correct. Um, what else do we have? Uh, uh, Time Gentleman explains, there were a couple of points out, there were a couple of crossing clues you completed with the answer vital role. Um, that we never looked at. So 53 down was self-explanatory, leap for the answer, or sorry, leap for the clue bound, but I had to look up 54 down, first name in detective fiction. The answer was Earl, referring to Earl Stanley Gardner, a prolific author best known for the Perry Mason stories. Yes, I completely forgot to look at some of those crossed clues. Whoops, thank you for that. Earl, I remember the clue, uh, first name in detective fiction, and then I couldn't think of an answer off hand before I had the insufficient crosses, so I didn't go back to it. I forgot. Um, yeah, I do know of Earl Stanley Gardner. I've never read any of his books, but I was familiar with him as the author of Perry Mason. Uh, Dragon Traces and several other people, but again, Dragon Traces was the first, so I'll read, read their clue, uh, points out that the um, music venue spelled O-P-R-Y is derived from opera, so it is pronounced Opry rather than Opry. And yes, of course, that's right. I, I did always assume it was derived from opera, but for some reason that didn't translate into my pronunciation. I don't know why. Anyway, thank you for pointing that out. And there we have it. Those were the clues from yesterday's puzzle, which means that's that for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed today's uh, crossword. And I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with the Sunday puzzle, a much larger grid. So do join me for that. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm -hmm.